we had Marshall. So as a vendor, what are some of the ways your clients are seeing value um, being added through the technology you provide or just prov the technology is providing in general? Yeah, um, you know, it's interesting in, in this space when it comes to smart technology because it's a newer uh, piece that's being added into uh, multifamily properties. I would say the first adoption of this maybe six years ago, seven years ago, eight years ago at the most. Uh, there's still some confusion among who makes the decision for something like this. Is it somebody in procurement? Is it somebody in finance? Is it somebody in operations? Uh, is it somebody in property management who's, who's going to be using this every single day? So we get bounced around uh, quite a bit when it comes to implementing smart technology, but at the end of the day, the, the chief technology officer can see something that integrates seamlessly with, with what they're using. The chief financial officer can see returns on an investment in smart home. Uh, the head of operations sees a smoother operation at each one of the properties that they manage. Um, the interesting thing here, you know, assuming any of you had more than $250,000 at SVB and it's gone now, uh, the, the investment in technology can be nothing. Uh, one of the things that ADT prides itself on is flexible investment options. So it gives you the ability to, to either pay for all this equipment up front or to lease the equipment from ADT. Uh, in that case, you get constant upgrades over the life of your agreement. Whenever it comes up for renewal, you can say, hey, what's the latest and greatest that's come out? Maybe there's a, a brand new sensor that comes out. It doesn't sound like that needs to be upgraded anytime soon, but maybe there's a, a new sensor that comes out that makes sense to upgrade on the property. But for the investment that people are making in technology, I, I feel like every supplier in the space says the same thing, right? It's going to drive down your operational costs. It's going to increase resident retention. It's going to increase resident satisfaction. Um, at the end of the day, a lot of products do that, but you can't go to your residence and say, great news, uh, for $10,000 a month, you can rent this one bedroom studio, and if you download these 42 apps, you'll never want to leave, right? So integrating all of this into one place is, is where the investment really makes the most sense. Um, the cool thing about a lot of products out there today uh, is that they require Wi-Fi, which is great in new builds. ADT is a 150-year-old company. Uh, we operated on phone lines uh, a while back. Uh, as phone lines got phased out, we moved to cellular communicators. As 2G got phased out, we upgraded everybody to 3G. As 3G's been phased out, we've moved up to 4G. But with cellular communication, uh, there's an always-on aspect to smart home. So it's not reliant on other technologies in the, the tech stack that multifamily operators go with. So the investment decision itself is one that uh, a lot of our buyers have gone all in on. They, they buy one property, it works well. They, they add five more properties, that works well. And then they say, what's the holdup? We'll get into more B and C stuff, but this is not uh, a luxury ad in a lot of cases. I don't live in a luxury home and I have smart home in my house. So uh, it works in B and C properties, it works in A properties. It's, it's the same across the board. Um, and it wasn't all that way. Going back to when you started knocking doors, I remember when we had some door knockers who'd be like, hey, I just talked to an apartment complex owner and they're ready to put one of these into everything. And they, you know, the, the sales rep was really excited. From a back end, it was like, no, we can't do that. Like, one, it, our systems didn't work to be able to do that, nor would it deliver the right value to an apartment complex owner. Right. What's changed between 20 years ago and now with your solution that, that really does bring value both to the resident, but particularly the property owner? Well, I can tell any of you that, that visit a property that an ADT rep stops by, uh, they'll still get the same happy years whenever you, whenever you say, hey, I want all 200 units done at once. <laughs> uh, and that'd be like a small business or a residential rep at ADT. The, the value differentiator is the enterprise software behind it. So uh, last year, in the middle of the year around June, ADT acquired a company called IOTIS. Uh, IOTIS is one of the smart apartment players in the space, uh, along with the other ones that you're all familiar with. Uh, but the enterprise software is really the kicker where you get a bulk rate which is heavily reduced over our retail rate. Uh, you can charge your residents less than the retail rate that they would get if they called ADT directly. A lot of you as operators probably have residents who make requests, hey, can I add smart home in here? Hey, can I add a security system in here? Um, as long as there's you know, must-tells approved by the, the property management company, our, our single family sellers will still go out there and sell residents, but that demand is there and you can capture the profit from that because of the, the bulk rate and then the integration on the, the software side where when you move a resident in, they get access to their smart home. When you say a resident's moving out, their access to the smart home goes away. Uh, ADT 
has primarily been an integrator until the acquisition of IOTIS where we, we now own the software that we're putting into these solutions as well. But as an integrator, we're always looking for new partnerships. We're always looking for ways to expand what you can do without having to download another 41 apps when you get into the property. So that's the big difference is that uh, instead of 200 single solutions with 200 logins, there's one login, you can see every smart home, every thermostat, every lock, control vacants, uh, you know, there's a lot that you can do with it, so. Now I'm going a little bit off script here, but as you are dealing with clients and they either have the opportunity they're about to sell a property or they're looking to buy a property, how does the existence or non-existence of a solution like yours impact the valuation? What, what are they telling you as to, to how that plays in? That is a great Taylor Wiedeker question. So that might actually be a natural segue. It probably to, is. To talk about that. Oh boy. So uh, right. I'll, I'll leave that up to you. Yeah, no, so great, great question. Um, let me think about that because I was definitely not prepared to answer that. I was, <laughs> it was going towards Marshall, so I was like, I'm, I'm interested. Here we go. All right. Okay, so really when an owner is considering a new technology, they need to be thinking long term. And I think that many of the providers in the space today, <clears throat> they're – Excellent individual solutions. I think you uh, made a great mention of that. But the problem is, of course, your residents left with 42 apps or whatever number of apps that really aligns with the number of systems you guys have decided to adopt. Um, so it's really important to make sure that you find an integrator and a partner, like whether it be ADT, whether it be one of the other providers, whichever one you guys like the best. Um, but make sure that those providers are looking to the future to ensure that they are future-proofing themselves, as well as you're going to want to make sure you're focusing on technologies like, uh, for instance, our clients, whenever they're installing smart locks, we don't have them do the uh, keyless version of the smart lock. We have them do the, it's the YRD226, which is the one that has the physical key and the digital key lock in one. Uh, and the biggest reason for that is because devices like that, they're more of like middle ground for a lot of the tenants that aren't necessarily embracing new technologies. Um, they're still, you know, looking for that physical keyhole. And so ultimately, by deploying certain technologies, uh, it will allow not only your tenants that are there today to remain happy with the home that they've built, but ultimately it will ensure that the next generation of renters, such as my generation and below, those are the guys that you're really trying to prepare for, and they expect technology to be included foundationally. So it definitely changes kind of if you're a long-term holding owner operator, you know, you definitely want to make sure you're thinking about those things. Uh, but if you're looking to make a quick sale, then, uh, you know, the valuation can be significant. Uh, there have been savings primarily from if, let's say, a new development is built and ADT is the solution you're going to deploy, ADT will write you a contract that will let you capitalize the full operational expenditure on the front end uh, with that new development. So when you go to sell, of course, it's going to look pretty positive from a dollars and cents standpoint because they're not going to see that monthly expenditure coming out. They're only going to see the revenue increase from that technology being deployed. Uh, but there are already systems like, say, monitored security that owners are charging residents. Actually, in Miami, we have a client. Uh, they installed smart home right next to a community that only was doing security only. And security only was getting 45 bucks a month just for security. So when they our client decided to deploy smart home and security, they're getting $75 per unit per month because they're still able to provide security that's expected, but now there's an additional differentiator. So when it comes to the sale, you know what I mean? And when it comes to you know, a potential investor wanting to take on this property for the next five, 10 years, <coughs> it's definitely important to make sure that if they're not with ADT or if they're with their own approach, that the hardware they deploy through a company like ADT is still applicable and future-proof and agnostic. And, so. and I, I will go a step further with that, just because we've dealt with some customers who have acquired properties that had a competitor system in it, uh, and we've dealt with some owners who have sold a property with ADT system in it. Uh, it's almost unanimous. Like we've, we've got clients who we do the majority of their portfolio, they'll buy a property with a competitor, and they say it's just it's easier to just keep this here. So the sale is not hindered at all by smart technology in there. Right. They're still acquiring the property, even with a preferred vendor in place, and they're saying, we're just going to keep this one as a one-off because we're already getting the revenue. The, the investment was already made by the previous owner. And for those, uh, for those owners with us that sell their properties, 
the handoff is almost always flawless. Like, hey, this transfers with the property. This is something that we're already charging residents for. And, and I don't think we've had a single instance of pushback from a buyer where ADT is active there already or any smart home solution is active where they say, you know, we'd like to buy the property sans this, this smart home technology. It's, it's like a swimming pool. It's like a gym. It's, if it's a fixture in the property already, you're buying the property with that there, so. Right, I mean, from a you know, single home residential point of view, when you're looking at homes and saying, okay, where, where can I flip? You know, here's some things I know that if this, this house is on the market, I know I can buy it, I can put these things in to add value and turn around and, and reap that harvest or hold it and reap that harvest. You know, I'm just kind of curious what some of the, the most commonly cited technology aspects exist in multifamily that are some of those the, those most popular technology items. Um, and maybe this is a, a question for our audience. And so Kate, as Katie here, so make sure she's got a microphone just in case. You know, as some of you are making decisions when it comes to looking at a property, are you looking for property that you can add technology in? Or are you looking to um, purchase property that already has that technology because you know it's going to be able to, to already drive that value? Anyone have anything you want to share? We may see a hand go up uh, for this question or for a future one, but the, the penetration right now for smart home, uh, that technology specifically is around 5% in multifamily right now. It's still uh, wide open for, for all of us. Residential, it's between 20 and 25. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, it's growing quickly. Uh, we're, we're at the beginning stages of that hockey stick where there were a bunch of early adopters uh, uh, and even some visionaries who said, this is gonna be the future, uh, let's implement this into our portfolio. Some of them went all in and those folks can't look back now. They, they're saying there's no way we can acquire a property without this technology in it because of either the operational, all the things that you see at NAA and NMHC, right? The operational savings, the resident retention, the resident satisfaction. It's true, it does exist whenever you, you implement something like this but uh, they're still 95% open right now for this. I would say that in the new construction space, that's probably, there's a very high uptick in new construction, but a lot of B and C properties that are looking to add value turn to something like this because it's relatively inexpensive and does drive a lot of revenue at the end of the day. I want to tack onto that, um, you know, what we see, when we've had to incorporate this flexibility into our model. Um, we offer a CapEx option, we offer an OpEx option because different organizations, depending on how they manage their properties. If it's a purchase and it's integrated into the building and new construction, absolutely it's a CapEx project. But um, when it's a retrofit, that introduces a new dynamic. You know, is there capital budget allocated for this? If not, you know, okay, can we slide this into OPEX? Does it make sense financially, you know, based on what we're using it for? So, um, you know, whether it's new construction or retrofit, um, having that flexibility on our side to address different sides of the market has been important. We'll talk about this more on Wednesday and go into some specifics. There was a hand up here, but technology allows you to drive value in, in several ways. One is obviously reducing the OPEX um, associated with your units, but to the customer experience, you also have that ability to drive additional revenue, to have customers, you know, residents wanting to pick your property over others, so that allows you to to you know, raise your rents, it also reduces your, your turnover, your churn rate. So there, there's a lot of compounding factors at play. So I assume all of these are wireless applications, whether it's new construction or retrofit? For my product, everything's wireless, yeah, yeah. Okay. And the ADT? There's, there's a power wire to the hub or the, the brain of the system and everything else is wireless. It's using Z-Wave technology, yep. So that makes, makes it easy for installation do you, you know, probably not as much on your side, but on your side, how do you deal with, you know, so many units so close to each other and potential kind of the crosstalk of frequencies been all figured out? Well, uh, Kristen Ellis is here with ADT as well. She was our guinea pig and sold the first smart home uh, community and it did crosstalk quite a bit, right? There was uh, battery drains on locks within 24 hours. It was a great learning experience for us and thank God we had a good customer who was understanding and said, Look, I, we're innovators in this space. We know that there's gonna be hiccups. Got that resolved, and now uh, because there's an individual hub in each unit, every device is pre-programmed prior to install to that, uh, the hub itself. So when we get out there, 
everything's labeled for unit 101, 102, 103. Uh, no crosstalk between the units. Everything communicates flawlessly on its own. Uh, of course, there are batteries in uh, a smart lock, for example, but they usually don't go bad between turn until the, the unit is turning. Um, I, I don't use my front door as often as I use my garage door, but my batteries lasted about two and a half years in, in a Yale smart lock. So um, again, great battery life out of it, not, not a cause for frustration. And rather than rekeying at the end of a lease, now you're just changing out four AA batteries. So a little bit different situation. And I know with my home security system that as the batteries get low, it's sending a signal back to the main hub saying the battery is low. And I imagine it in turn can then pass that on to the, the enterprise software yep. to let you know, hey, you know, when we have our service maintenance guy going through that area tomorrow, go ahead and change this or, or communicate with the customer to be able to, to get access to the unit to change it. 100%. Yep.